<laughs> Greetings and salutations. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Hey, after I made that tool video, I had a couple commenters uh, suggest that I demonstrate a couple of these tools, like the plasma cutter. And I thought, oh, that's a splendid idea. So today I'm going to demonstrate the use of three of the cutting tools in that video. My chop saw, my plasma cutter, and my uh, little four and a half inch grinder with a cutoff wheel on it. Also would like to say thank you for the kind words that all you wrote in uh, in that video. One of the reasons why I continue to do this is because of comments like that 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 uh, say that you help me out and you're an inspiration. I'm humbled by that and I appreciate those comments. They keep me motivated. So I'm going to start with uh, the cutoff saw. And this is just a simple abrasive saw. And uh, let me bring it down to its level. So I got a piece chucked in here into the vise. This vise is adjustable up to 45 degrees. I have to set it 90 degrees. Uh, there's a half used abrasive saw in here. And it's just as simple as pulling the trigger. One disadvantage to using this saw is that you end up with a very sharp burr that will cut you open right quick. So you saw me grind that burr off on the wheel as it was still spinning. Also, a burr on the inside that is razor sharp. So you don't want to you don't want to drag your finger across that if you can avoid it. But that makes pretty short work. You saw the sparks. You need to be wary of where. Those sparks are going so you don't catch something on fire. Well, they're not, it's a pretty simple machine. Let's go to the plasma cutter next. So, we'll be talking about the Hypertherm Power Max 30 today, but most plasma sh machines are going to be set up similarly uh, for you to use to make a cut. And the first thing you need if your machine doesn't have onboard air is a clean, dry source of air. I have a, a big air compressor out back and uh, um, some, of the, some of these machines come equipped with their own air so you don't have to buy a, uh, an air compressor to complete this package but this particular unit requires uh, a external source of air so in the back here is a uh, fitting for the air you plug that in you plug the cord in now I got this plugged into 220 power you take a negative lead and you attach it to the workpiece. Turn the unit on. At the front of this machine is your selector knob. And this uh, will starts at 15 amps, up to 20 amps, 25 amps, and 30 amps. 20 amps is the maximum setting for 110 and 30 amps is the maximum setting for uh, 240. At uh, the thickness of this metal is 095, and probably run at around 25 amps. It's hard to see because of the lighting, but there's a, a light here that tells me the power is on, it's green. There's another light here that indicates that there's pressure in the, the, the uh, air side. So if I were to disconnect the air you see that light lights up and the uh, the plasma torch will not uh, ignite and to yeah, I plug the air back in I got to shut it off turn it back on to reset it and then this light will illuminate if there's a problem with the torch and then this is the over temperature thermal protection this will light up and the torch will quit working again all machines most modern Plasma cutters will have some of these features. This just happens to be the one in the Hypertherm PowerMax 30. So once everything checks out, you, your your AC light is illuminated. That's the only light that should, should be lit up. And the other three are not illuminated, which means everything's good to go. Then you can take your torch over your, your uh, piece and start cutting. I like having a straight edge to run 
to drag my uh, torch across. Now, some older machines don't allow you to touch this to the workpiece. This is the consumable tip. This is where the magic happens. And um, so you need to know whether your machine is capable of doing that. Uh, probably some of the cheap import machines won't allow you. You have to, you have to maintain about an eighth of an inch gap off the workpiece and make your cut. This machine allows for drag cutting. So you need to account for the, the um, half the thickness of this tip so that you're making your cut on the line. And you just pick a spot, a plunge cut. Drag the plasma torch. I'll rotate. Continue my cut, rotate again. Torch to continue to blow air to cool the tip, and it'll shut off automatically. You're left with a nice, clean, weldable cut. Now, if there's any dross that you want to remove, you can remove it with a screwdriver or anything to get in there and just it pops right off. What's dross? That's the slag left over from the from the cut. That's how you use a plasma cutter. Well, one final note with the plasma cutter. You saw me disconnect the air hose and turn the machine off as I walked by. I don't like to leave the, the, the hose uh, hooked up to the machine if I'm not using it. I don't like to leave that, that system pressurized. I don't know why, it's just reasons, I guess. <clears throat> so the final method I'm gonna show you today is using the cutoffs wheel on the four and a half inch grinder. This is probably the most hazardous way to cut metal, especially the way that I'm doing it. This, this particular uh, cutoff saw comes with a guard and uh, I'm a moron. I don't suggest that you use this without the guard, but it's a lot easier to use it without the guard. You just need to be really extra careful. And I've been, I've been bit by this more than more than once. So um, if you're going to use this tool, make sure that you're uh, that you leave the guard on, or at least be very careful when you use it, because it doesn't care how uh, good your skin is. It'll chew right through it. Yeah, that's the basic use of those three tools, the, the cutoff saw, the uh, plasma cutter, and the grinder with the cutoff wheel. I want to also uh, make a, a side note on that grinder. With the cutoff wheel, 
if you're using it to cut through metal like that, you want the sparks coming at you. So you want to stand off to the side so you don't catch your pants on fire. Don't ask me how I know. What all three of these machines have in common is you need to be aware of where the sparks are going. They all make sparks. They all generate heat. And you need to be uh, aware of where um, those sparks are going. Some of you might know that uh, I'm also an avid shooter and I reload my own ammunition. And a while back I was grinding over on the bench and at some time in the past I had dropped a primer and that, that live primer rolled up underneath the bench and I was grinding away at something and the sparks went under the bench and ignited that primer and scared the living hell out of me. It didn't do any damage, it just went pow and scared the crap out of me. But uh, you just need to be aware of where those sparks are going because you can catch things on fire. I've caught my pant leg on fire. In fact, these boots have a Dickard shoestring. That's from grinding. So if this video was informative, if it wasn't, um, if I wasted your time, I, I sincerely apologize. That wasn't my intent. So I hope that illustrates the basic use of the chop saw, plasma cutter, and a grinder with a cutoff wheel. Until next time, fellas, you have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep the powder dry, have a splendid day. Bye.